Have you ever had or wanted a pen pal? Well, one of our own Fox 11 co-workers has one, and she's been keeping in touch with her pen pal for more than 40 years. Fox 11's Emily Dean shares this unique story on how two women are trying to keep the art and joy of pen paling alive. When you look up pen pal in the dictionary, it reads, a person with whom one keeps an exchange of letters, usually someone so far away that a personal meeting is unlikely. Well, that's not the case for one Fox 11 employee. Karen Blazeski has kept in touch with her pen pal, Deanne Eyrig, for, get this, 42 years. Not only have they kept in touch, they've also met. Deanne recently made her way to Titletown, and I got the chance to spend some time with two women brought together by the written word. Surprised me that it's gone so quickly. <laughs> you know, it's just amazing that first of all she kept the letter. At first glance, Karen Blazeski and Deanne Eyrig could be mistaken for sisters, but they're not. So, how did the look alike strangers become best friends? It's all thanks to a pen pal article each found in Teen Magazine dating back to the year 1969. Said if you wanted a pen pal, fill out this questionnaire, mail it in, and we'll match you up with somebody. And that's what they did. Both Karen and Deanne filled out applications describing themselves. I wrote something really, sound like a teenager, right? About being a teeny bopper. Mailed them out and waited to hear back from the magazine. Never really expecting to get anything and sent it in and then found out that I was matched up. Karen was going to be my pen pal. At the time, Karen was 16, living in a suburb near Rochester, New York. Deanne, 17, living the simple life on a farm near Goodland, Kansas. Two teens nearly 1,500 miles apart began writing letters that would soon create a lifelong friendship. I was so excited, very excited. That's how Deanne felt the day she received Karen's first letter. Dated September 3rd, 1969. Dear Deanne, sorry I haven't written sooner, but I've been busy doing last minute things before school started. As the years went by, the letters kept coming. In their teens, Karen and Deanne wrote about school, what movies and music they liked. Buena Sara, I don't even remember that movie. Mrs. Campbell, Oliver, the Maltese Bippy with Rowan and Martin. But eventually their conversations shifted. Both got married, had kids, and were stay-at-home moms. She would send me when she was making clothes for the kids, swatches of material. In 1990, Karen was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Karen started radiation. A year later, she relapsed and needed a bone marrow transplant. The news was hard to take. So that was kind of a, a daunting thing to face. But she didn't face it alone. Deanne, who Karen had never met, was by her side, even if she was across the country. I sent her a pack of self-addressed, self-stamped postcards, and I asked her if um, she would have a family or a friend write me one every week and let me know how everything was going. Karen did just that. Each week, she made sure Deanne knew how things were progressing. She said, if I live through this, I'm going to meet my pen pal. Nearly three years later, in 1993, Karen was on a plane to meet her pen pal for the very first time. I think it was just somebody from so far away that had never met me was so concerned about how I was doing. In 1995, Karen and her family moved to Wisconsin, where she has been cancer-free ever since. Over the past 42 years, Karen and Deanne have only met three times. They've been featured in a Goodland newspaper, traveled together on a cruise to the Bahamas. Oh my God, we did look different. Look at those glasses. <laughs> and their recent get together, Deanne finally made her way to Wisconsin in April. Now, instead of letters, both rely on Facebook and email to keep in touch. But they know if it wasn't for that pen pal article in Teen Magazine, their paths wouldn't have crossed. You know, it was just more her friendship that I have really enjoyed. In Green Bay, Emily Deem, Fox 11 News. Emily also asked the women how many letters they have sent to each other over the years. They didn't have an exact number, but said it's probably around 100. And if you're wondering what it cost Deanne and Karen to send their first pen pal letter back in 1969, it was just six cents for the stamp. Deanne and Karen also have some tips if you'd like to start pen paling the old fashioned way or even pen paling online. We have that information for you on our website. Just go to fox11online.com.